instead of moments of time, but actually people, great Ohioans. And so they kind of started working on this idea of commissioning paintings of great Ohioans. And one of the first here, this is Thomas Edison. And I can tell you, if you're not from Ohio, people go, what? Ohio has nothing to do with Thomas Edison. Wow, well, we can claim him. We actually, both of these paintings are about people that we argue with other states about, which I actually, I actually like. Um, we, um, uh, Thomas Edison was actually uh, spent the first seven years of his life in Milan, Ohio, and uh, before going to <clears throat> Michigan, uh, he spent some time in Michigan. Uh, but thank, we don't really argue, we don't really fight about Edison with Michigan. We fight with Edison with New Jersey because of course uh, Thomas Edison's great lab in Menlo Park was in New, Jer was in Menlo Park, New Jersey. So we, we fight with New Jersey about um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Edison. Now again, for those of you, who, it's hard to see it from here and what I encourage you all to do after the tour is run up the stairs and look at it. Um, but again, how do you conceptualize someone's life? What do you, what do you emphasize? How do you imagine that? So this, uh, this painting is actually also by Howard Chandler Christie. And again, remember I told you he was like, did spend a lot of time as a portraitist? Well, this was appropriate commission for him. Um, it was painted, uh, it was completed in 1950. So it's a, so after the World War II sort of idea. Now in this, what we've got is, it's hard for you to see, but on the far left, you have, you, what, what he did was give you three moments, three versions of Edison. On the very far left, in the lower left-hand corner, you see Edison as a young boy. We need to get that in there because that was a part of time he spent in Ohio. Uh, and I think actually he's got, you know, he used to sell newspapers on the railroad, and I think he's got a newspaper in his hand, as I recall. And then on the far right, um, you've got the Edison, uh, which is, you know, you always kind of the Wizard of Menlo Park. These are the years he spent in Menlo Park when he, in, you know, when he invites, invents the phonograph, when he invents the electric light, all the things that Edison invents. So you've got that famous uh, image of Edison with his, you know, his, you know, hand on his on his temple, resting, thinking, you know, the Menlo Park. And then in the center you have the Edison, Thomas Edison of history. The moment, the, the old genius, I mean, he's in his 80s at this point. You see this, the great mane of white hair. And at this point, when he's 82 years old, Edison had, Edison had 1,092 1 or 93 patents to his name. This is not a, this, you know, what, busy guy. I mean, this is, you know, I was wondering, what have I been doing in my time? But the, this guy, this many uh, patents. So the, the whole, the idea of, of um, Edison as a genius. And then there's this strange angel thing going on over here, this winged figure. And for me, I immediately thought, oh, you know, the idea of, of inspiration, this winged figure of inspiration. Well, actually, I mean, you can take it that way, and I think you can read it both ways. But actually, it's also um, the artist based it on a sculpture that the French had given as a gift to Edison, which was called the Spirit of, the Spirit of Light. So I, it's interesting that it, it's actually based on a real sculpture that Edison owned as a, as a gift, and then also it, it functions in this way as sort of this lighting, uh, you know, the light of progress. Uh, and the painting's actually called Dawn of a New Life, so it sort of plays with the, with the, um, with the uh, title. So this idea of conceptualizing, you know, a life. Now, it's kind of interesting. To, remember we talked about taste and how taste changes? <laughs> well, this one, we took it down at some point. Somebody after the 1950s went, ooh. Okay, so we in our, you know, who's Howard Chandler, just Howard Chandler Christie again? Who is that? That's the kind of thing that happens. It happens in art museums as well, not just in historic places. So they took it down and they rediscovered it um, in 1967. Actually, the Ohio Arts Council discovered it in storage and with a number of other paintings. But interestingly enough, it wasn't in the first group to come back. It was um, sort of left left down for a while and really hasn't been returned to us all that many years. But it's really exciting to see it.